What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. We're going to talk about a few different horror topics in this video here today. We'll be talking about The Exorcist Believer. We'll be talking about Smile 2, which has gotten an official release date today. And we'll be concluding with a theory about Scream 7. Just a little opening idea of my concocted. Now, starting off with The Exorcist Believer. The Exorcist Believer released a clip today. And it's one of the most baffling clip choices I've ever seen in terms of what you would release to get people hyped for the movie granted obviously i'm thinking of it from a more critical perspective because most people most likely are going to see this clip and eat it up uh, a lot of you listening will probably watch it and be in agreement with me but the clip is titled angela and victor i'll actually leave a link to it in the description it opens with a shot of their neighborhood it's nighttime and this quite honestly looks like haddonfield i'm not gonna lie then we see Victor tucking Angela in for the night and he's asking what she and Catherine were doing in the woods. So it's after they have obviously found these girls. Angela says she just wanted to talk to mom again and she talks about hearing this voice. Victor asks, well, what does this voice say? Angela then looks at him, then looks up at something, looks off at something behind him. And we get a glimpse of a evil Angela smiling while screeching sounds blare to try to make this scary and a lot of people like me who are tired of that they're just going to immediately check out upon seeing a clip like this because this is why i can get behind the argument that a24 probably should have handled this ip and not blumhouse Un and universal the psychological horror stuff is better from a24 and the exorcist seems more fitting for them it seems right up their alley this clip at least lets us know why angela and Catherine go into the woods but knowing from the synopsis that there was a mother that died and left a father widowed raising his child alone is that really that shocking that that's what they were doing in the woods trying to reach this girl's mother again no it's not so this clip i'll leave a link to it again in the description you guys can check the clip out let me know what you think about it i think it's a pretty terribly put together thing to release in terms of being wanting or wanting to build any hype around this project but diving into smile 2 so smile 2 is going to release in theaters on october 18th 2024 the news broke today on this this comes from the hollywood reporter that i'm reading this next excerpt from who writes smile was considered one of the most profitable movies of 2022 earning 216 million globally on a 17 million dollar budget it launched filmmaker parker finn as a director to watch in its wake he signed a first look deal with paramount the project had a story journey to the screen initially intended for streaming it was upgraded to theatrical after a successful test screening i can only really say this in terms of smile 2 i'm looking forward to it and the second thing is i'm still going to have to predict that this is going to have something to do with following kyle gowner's character who i think was named joel i believe if that character is still alive just going off of the ending of the first movie that seems like the likely next step for a sequel after seeing kyle's work in the passenger this year recently i'm kind of rooting for him to lead this sequel to smile because i think he could deliver yet another career best like he just recently did with the passenger if you haven't checked out the passenger go check that movie out because kyle did a tremendous job there and if he gets the lead smile too i can only imagine what type of work he would get to do given the material that he's given to work with uh, are you excited for Smile 2? Why or why not? Let me know down below. Diving into Scream 7. So this is just going to be a theory, but I wanted to discuss a possible opening featuring three returning stars, two legacy, one semi-legacy. So we're going to be focusing on the Kincaids, so Mark and Sydney, and then Gail Weathers. Those are going to be the three primary characters part of this opening. We're in Seattle. Gail has come to visit Mark and Sydney because they just renewed their wedding vows and Gail was unable to be there. So she arranged something with them to make up for it. They all are having dinner at Mark and Sydney's three story house, which is very spacious, I might add. Spacious enough for another quality chasing from Miss Weathers. The kids are away with Mark's mother for the night. Gail gets a phone call during dinner and of course it's everyone's favorite it's Ghostface asking if Gail missed him he demands to be placed on speaker before she can even reply so Sydney can hear him and Gail does so in fear there's a tone of voice to Ghostface this time around that made her just hold off on that slick remark she was about to give Ghostface says the iconic line 
Hello, Sydney. So nice of you and Mark to renew your vows before you depart from this world, obviously sending a clear direct message that he plans to kill them both. Sydney begins cursing, ask, asking what the F does he want now? Ghostface says to watch her tone unless you want me to slit your little girl's throats and we can audibly start to hear the girls crying and screaming mommy help us over the phone. Sydney says I swear if you lay a, fing lay a finger on my girls I will end you. Ghostface tells her you'd never make it in time before I carve them up. He tells Mark and Sydney to get into their cars and come to Mark's mother's house if they want their girls to live. And then he says, and by the way, Mark, your mother didn't put up much of a fight. She was no fun. Mark becomes visibly angered and saddened knowing his mother has passed. He begins cursing with tears in his eyes. Gail says she's coming with and Ghostface says, no, you stay because we're going to play a little game. Sydney gives Gail back her phone, she and Mark leave, and Ghostface begins taunting Gail. This ultimately leads to Sydney and Mark arriving at his mother's house to see that the girls aren't even there. They do find the body of Mark's dead mother, but back at their house, Gail has been attacked and kidnapped by Ghostface. They find a note on Mark's on Mark's dead mother's body reading thanks for the scoop a clear reference to Gail since she likes to report on the news they realize what's happened and they rush to go back to their car and we cut to the title card now Gail and Sydney's kids would be kidnapped in this opening because they get there the kids aren't even there and then while they were on their way to go get the kids Gail is having an, another iconic chasing back at their house it's happening around this spacious location. It can take place on all three floors if you want to. She can we can have a lot of furniture being broken and everything. It ultimately would conclude with Gail being knocked unconscious and being kidnapped. Obviously, Mark's mother being the only person who really legitimately died in this opening sequence. And then unfortunately, it was off screen. They can obviously, if you want to, you can work it into being on screen, but there would be an off screen kill for our opening. And the biggest thing that happens is that Gail Weathers and Sydney's kids are kidnapped and the title card again would come in after they find mark's dead mother's body with a letter saying or a note saying thanks for the scoop a clear reference to the fact that gail's in trouble and that they were tricked you guys can let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below what do you think about an opening like that where gail weathers is kidnapped along with sydney's kids to open the film i know i touched on sydney's kids being kidnapped for quite some time but throwing in gail weathers into the mix could be another interesting layer not to say that Courtney Cox would have less screen time, but she more or less wouldn't have as much as she did have in five or six, uh, unfortunately, because you're going to get more so of a Sydney Sam driven story in my mind. So a lot of Courtney's material would be coming from them trying to track her down for a lot of the movie but let me know what you think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and this video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course let me see any movies news or reviews i'm going to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video